School of Design, which is like the premier industrial design program in the country, as far as I know. That's the one that's like the most famous. So he's going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, his, uh, his experiences there and uh, bring some of that to you today. So welcome, Adam. Good morning, everyone. Afternoon, I guess technically. I'm so excited to be here. I was well, at a concert the other week in Salina, and Chris was there. We got to hang out afterwards. Her husband, James, is an old time, old friend of mine through the music community. And I didn't really know this at all. I guess I had met you before, maybe. Briefly. But, yeah. Very briefly. And so we started talking, you know. What are you passionate about? What are you passionate about? And I learned that she was a professor here in the mechanical engineering department, and I learned that she was teaching this course on the aesthetics of design, and that was deeply interesting to me. And so we chatted more. And so I thought I'd just start with a brief talk around my background and why this is so exciting to me, and then We'll get hands on and do some drawing together. But I also want to start with just getting to know you all a little bit. So, because I don't really know, I met Corey and Matt and Jeremy. Pull out your tableton so we both can read your names. Okay? Yes, I saw that. That was like the first one. I think we Oh, nice. Oh, they're customized. Yes, Great. it's a design process. <laughs> Be very random, but I find I'm very like limited by what I can do with my skills rather than what I can imagine. Like I okay. can I can imagine something very aesthetic, and then it's like oh I want to like carve this into something beautiful, and I can like picture it, but then I go to try to do it, and it's like this just isn't gonna happen. Uh huh. Uh huh. 
So you're 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 finding that tension point between your vision and your skill sets. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we all, hopefully, we all bump up against that tension point because hopefully our vision is always reaching, and we've got our skill set, and it's and we've got our team, and uh, so I think that's a great tension to feel. Uh, and hopefully, like, but what I hear is that it's not letting, it's not limiting your vision. Because you're still imagining stuff, even if, and then when you go to create it, you still have some skills to develop to get there. So I grew up being very encouraged to draw when I was little. I was a very peaceful child and could sit for a long time just with some paper and some crayons. My parents were really encouraging of the creative process. I grew, I was born in 1979, and in the 80s, there was a character on television named Commander Mark. Has anyone ever heard of Commander Mark? It was awesome. I think you must have local. Uh, to California? Yeah. Really? Like, it wasn't even national television, maybe. I don't even know. I wasn't old enough to consider, like, how broadly the broadcast went. <laughs> but Commander Mark, you can imagine him, he, he had dark hair, he had a mustache, he wore like a like a red jumpsuit, or kind of like a utility suit, and he had all these pockets in his suit, and there were like markers and pencils and erasers, and in the course, in each episode, he would teach you some secret of drawing. It could be like, it could be one of them was perspective, one of them was overlapping, one of them was shading. He'd draw creatures, space aliens, spaceships, imaginary landscapes, and I just got this sense of like, whoa, when you draw, you can just you can create worlds. And it was so compelling. And now, oh, well, going through the industrial design program at RISD, and coming here and getting to be in this engineering building, I'm so excited because it's like, that's what we're actually doing. We're actually creating our world. And I have esteemed the role of the designer and the engineer at its highest as an inventor of culture. Because when we build something, we suggest a way of behavior and just it's this feedback loop. So that's exciting to me. When I, I went to the Waldorf school, so we got, did lots of arts in our curriculum. When it came time to choose a college, I thought, oh, should I go to engineering school or should I go to art school? I loved both things, I applied to both schools, I just ended up being more in the mood to go to art school. So I got to RISD and I was like, oh, all these majors, what am I going to choose? And I've been constantly fascinated by this combination of the technical with the beautiful. Do you know how in ancient Greek mythology you've got Aphrodite? Maybe everyone's heard of Aphrodite, right? The goddess of love and sex and sensuality. Romance. Chime in correctly. <laughs> and then there's Hephaestus. Has anyone heard of Hephaestus? Uh, but Hephaestus was the crippled god of the forge. Or you could say he was like the god of technology. He knew how to build stuff. He knew how to work with metal. And, and Hephaestus and Aphrodite were married at one point. And I'm just so curious about this marriage of Hephaestus, the god of technology, and Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty. So this asked me to talk about sketching. And the importance of sketching has been something that we've been exploring, I think, in the creative process. So I, I, I want you to think about Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks. Have you all seen some of those images? I brought with me today this wonderful giant heavy book that my parents gave me as a gift a few years ago. It's awesome. The Complete Paintings and Drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. And you can see for Leonardo, drawing was, it was much more than just illustration. It was, it was a way of, uh, it was a way of understanding creativity and understanding creation. So one of the great functions of drawing is as soon as you put the pen to page, you start forcing yourself to bring vision into some level of reality that, that you can 
get feedback from with your senses. And so we're looking at drawing as a means of communication, not necessarily what we might think of as art, although we could go into a conversation around what that line even is or if it exists. So you're welcome to flip through this if you want at some point. But there are loads of advantages to going through a drawing process and just feeling free in your sketching process. Does everyone, raise your hand if you feel pretty liberated to draw. Okay, raise your, <laughs> raise your hand if you still feel a little bit of uh, inhibition or uh, like there are some, it's not quite as fluid as you would like it. You just, that's, that's not a totally easy process. Raise it high and proud. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's kind of a mix. So I want to just lead us through some ideas today that might help to make that a, a more fluid process. When you draw, you immediately have this cycle going on from your brain to your hand to the marks on the page to your eyes to your brain and you have this loop that's happening and you start engaging parts of your brain this is part of uh, like drawing on our conversation that night around the dinner table uh, you start on start drawing on parts of your brain that you wouldn't otherwise be engaged in so that can also bring about a level of creativity or tap an aspect of your creativity that might not otherwise be the case I hear you're all working on defining a kind of final project, or what was it? They're trying to, yeah, they're, they're, they're at the point where they need to figure out what they're going to make for their main semester project. Oh, yeah. Cool. An exciting time. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. Anyone excited about their idea so far? Or uh, are you, is it at this point that you like have the idea, or you're, you're still figuring out what that might be, right? How many of you are still in that category D? Okay. What, what's category D? Category D is panicked, no clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, so it's about half the class there um, on Monday. All right, cool. So we can use drawing to, uh, to ease that process. We, we hear people say a picture is worth a thousand words. And why is that the case? Like, because uh, words are great, and we can do a lot with words, but one of the reasons I think it is because when we draw, we, we suddenly, uh, you know, marks can be literal or schematic, diagrammatic, iconic. You know, what, what is that? We can, we, we don't know. I, <laughs> it could be so many things. I was, uh, having, I was flirting via text with this woman recently, and we're talking, and, and she, uh, she sends me, she uses her punctuation, and um, sends me this, and then, <laughs> you know, it's like a parenthesis and a, a vertical bar and another parenthesis. And then she says, uh, <laughs> that's everything you wanted to be. And it was. That was that was that was everything I wanted to be. So you can you can see like just with a few simple lines we start suggesting and, and our mind fills in the gaps, so to speak. So we have this opportunity for rapid visualization. One of the textbooks we used at RISD in our industrial design program was called Rapid Viz. Has anyone heard of that? Have you ever come across that book? It's just a sketching book that looks to take a different approach at getting people to really uh, move forward freely with their sketching. And I want to lead us through a couple of exercises with that. So we go till 12.50, right? Yes. We better start, we better start drawing. So 
I'd like you to start off by standing up and just like shaking out your arms a little bit. Loosening up your hands because we're gonna draw with our using our using our bodies. So we're just gonna pay attention to our bodies for a moment. And I'd like you to uh, I just wanna lead you through a couple exercises that I got from a really cool book called How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci by a guy named Michael Gelb. And this was used in a course that I took my senior year in the industrial design program at RISD for a class called uh, Curiosita, the Art of Innovation. And we went through this whole book, which has seven, what the author calls, Da Vincian principles. And it's a really cool read and very easy uh, to access, so I recommend it. But what I'd like you to do now is just uh, make little circles in the air with each of your fingers. <clears throat> and now rotate your, when you're done with that, rotate your wrists, hands at the wrists. And you can go in both directions. Nice opportunity to take a couple breaths. Now rotate at the elbows. And then just go to your shoulder. Make sure you, you don't clobber anyone next to you. But get, find a space where you can just like really, like really move your arms around in massive big circles. And uh, try both directions. And, and now, now imagine that. <laughs> uh, imagine that you have uh, lines of color like streaming from your fingertips, just like. Imagine you're, you're shooting out lines of color into the space around you. Yeah, I mean, it could be whatever color you like. It could be rainbow if you prefer, you know, like massive giant rainbows filling the universe. Uh, okay, that's good. Now you made me think of the Squatty Potty Unicorn. The Squatty Potty Unicorn? Yeah. It's an ad. It's an advertisement. So if you Google Squatty Potty, Unicorn, you'll know what I mean. Okay, excellent. There's such good ad campaigns out right now. Like, have you studied any of these awesome ad campaigns that are like so funny you just start sharing them with everyone? Yes. Like that is advertising success, I think. Um, like the poopery is another one. Yeah. In a similar vein, maybe. Yeah, so um, the, the Squatty Potty Unicorn uh, poops rainbow colored ice cream. Oh yes, I have seen it. Oh, God. Rainbow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if you prefer to imagine rainbow colored soft serve unicorn poo, that's a good <laughs> out. Okay, so now we're going to uh, massage our hands like this. Oh man, just a little self massage, it's really worthwhile. And you can take a moment to take like three deep breaths. Massage both hands. Get comfortable, however you need, like if you're too warm or too cold or. A wedgie or whatever, just like take care of it. <laughs> um, all right, so now we're gonna we're gonna find a place to draw, and I, could you just hold up your notebooks, however? I just want to get a sense for their size in general. Okay, yeah, those are pretty small in general for what I want to do. So I would like to see if we can use the whiteboards around the room to do some drawing, and so we have lots of space along here and all around the room. So get a marker, and we might have enough room for everyone around the periphery, but if we don't, then we can have some people drawing in their sketchbooks. Is there a particular size of notebook that you recommend, like, just like in like, general use of when you're Oh, yeah. Is there a particular size of notebook I recommend? I, I mean, when it comes to your sketchbook, there, there are a few different parameters. Like, this is my current journal of creative activity here that I sketch in. Um, but it has to be portable and practical, too. So it's a balance there. I mean, when it comes to these drawing exercises particularly, I just want us to have a big 
surface to work on. I don't know, I would say like as big as it feels comfortable, then it's still portable. Um, sometimes like, it's nice to have a small, the way you relate with the page creatively feels important at least to be like a different size. You can fit more stuff on depending on how big you write, how big you draw. Um, I know you guys, I have to go off the top of the show. Like, I want to give more detail to Yeah, I'm having to go off the page now. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Do you have a dead pen? Any dead pens? Any dead pens? Any dead pens? Any dead pens? <laughs> how, are we, how are we doing with our logistics? Does everyone have a spot to draw? Does anyone not have a spot to draw? Um, it's a little crowded. Got room for another person. <laughs> first year that we all start our majors, so it's kind of like your foundation year within your program. So in industrial design, one of the, one of the classes we had just involved hand drawing skills. Oh, should I like sort of stay? No, 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 okay. don't worry. Okay. Forget it's here. Okay. Uh, and we, so instead of just using notebooks, we got these massive rolls of paper, just like big fat rolls of paper that we could just spread out across our drafting table and have a sense of limitlessness as we were just practicing drawing straight lines over and over again, and uh, circles and ellipses and squares and cubes and constructing these sorts of things and rotating them in space. And so I want to engage you on this bigger level with these whiteboards because I think too often in our drawing process we start, we just start sort of small uh, and never try the big thing. And I think it's better to develop that whole body process and then get small rather than the other way around. So we have these nice big whiteboard spaces. Uh, again, be gentle with your neighbors as you're drawing along. But the thing I'd like to start with is scribbling. I would like you to now spend approximately one minute just scribbling lines, shapes, textures, anything that you're just feeling at the moment. Just put pen to board and start scribbling. It could be fast, slow, whatever. Just just mar make marks. If, you have, if you're holding any anxiety or tension in your body, let it go. You can use this whiteboard over here, the one with the, the smart whiteboard. You can just, that's a whiteboard. You can draw, draw on it. Yeah. Yeah, they said yeah. it was a little hard to wipe off. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we can clean it up. Okay. All right. Whatever works. Yeah, just scribble away. Scribble with abandon. Okay, now I'd like you to uh, switch hands. So whatever hand you were using, uh, just switch to the other hand and scribble with that hand. Is anyone here equally uh, comfortable drawing with both hands? Just curious. 
When it comes to the racing, I wonder if um, I wonder if we have more than just that one, or if I might grab some paper towels or something. There are erasers scattered around. Maybe there's like one on every board. Oh yeah, that should be good. Okay. Uh, but I can also get. Uh, uh, I can also grab some paper towels. I'll go grab some paper towels. Okay. Great. Go ahead and uh, take a quick look at your scribbles and enjoy a moment of non-judgment around them, this observation. <laughs> and uh, now go ahead and erase them. We're going to do the next thing. So grab an eraser nearby and just erase your whole board. <laughs> nice scribbling, people. <laughs> Biz has gone to get some paper towels too, so we can make our erasure faster. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Not too. We can make it. Uh, yeah. Anyone short on erasers? Want a paper towel? No, so here you go. You can go for it. Go for it. Blake, is there a piece of Okay. Okay, the next thing I'd like you to try out now is to, uh, I'd like you to draw a straight line. And uh, I would like you to try drawing a straight horizontal line. <laughs> <laughs> Vertical's good. That's good too. Okay, it's a good line. Horizontal, like try horizontal. Degrees, so you're good. Uh, yeah. Start with one. <laughs> and then once you've drawn this straight line across, I want you to just notice and make it as long as you can without bumping into your neighbor. Uh, I want you to do it a little faster. And oh, these are some great straight lines, guys. You might notice that your line, could, the straightness of your line, could be improved upon. And if that's the case, you can see like where does your anatomy need adjusting, or what kind? For a moment now, don't make the line straight. Just take your arm and like swoop across as naturally as possible. Fast, just like swoop. Left to right, right to left, whatever. And notice the shape that it makes. And when you see that shape, you'll see what adjustments you were making when you were making your lines straight. So now go back to making some straight lines. Okay, now I'd like you to make vertical lines. Go ahead and keep those, those there and just make some vertical lines. Again, do that experiment where you make a vertical line, but then just like try letting your arm fall really naturally. See what shape it makes. And that can inform you regarding what adjustments you might need to make in order to make the line straight. <laughs> okay, great. Go ahead and erase this.
Okay. There's, there's a, uh, are we all erased? Is it erased? Just about. There's a man named Dan Rome who has a drawing course. He's the author of a book called